Hi, I'm Peter J. Ray. Welcome to my second floor lair. That's a reference to Austin Powers. FYI. That's an acronym for for your information. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's uh, stay on topic here. Even though th this entire uh, video will be uh, tends to be off topic, or but uh, which is fine because that's about what's, what's what le learning's all about. There's so many interesting things to learn, and we it's interesting to it's okay to get off topic because we have different interests and in different fields and different subjects. So anyway, today's topic is Restless Remarkable Books number sixteen. Our first, our first book today is 14 Stories by Pearl S. Buck, published in 1961. Of course, Pearl Buck is the famous American woman who lived most of her life in China, at least until the uh, communist takeover. And uh, so, and she really helped Americans get, sort of get a window on China, life in China in the 20th century. And of course, her best book is, was The Good Earth. The next book is The Novel by James A. Mishner, published in 1991. Of course, Mishner was the master of historical novels, and in this book he decided to write a book about, you know, writing a novel and uh, having a character working on a novel so he could describe what he went through, his experiences, what, what it took, and wh what's involved in, in writing a novel. So it was a nice thing that he did, and he... He mentioned here, this is a shorter missioner, which is nice, because some of them are so long. You know, he, he wrote a book on South Africa called The Covenant. More than a thousand pages. I never read it because uh, he was so intimidated by the length. This one's only 435 pages long. And I liked how he mentioned Saul Bellow and John Cheever. Now, those are two authors, uh, pretty highly esteemed, who I, I read maybe one or two books each. And... Uh, Kind of picked my interest in. So, anyway, this is another fine James Mishner uh, novel called The Novel. The next book is The Moon and Sixpence by W. Somerset Maugham, published in 1919. Now, this book is about the life of Paul Gauguin, who was the famous painter. In, in the novel, he, changed, this is a, well, he changed, turns it into a novel, and uh, the character is known as Strickland. And, you know, it's, this is really some story. <coughs> when Paul Gauguin went to Tahiti and lived the rest of his life there, I believe, and really, and, and most of his famous paintings, and several here at the Cleveland Museum of Art, depict life in Tahiti, and where he, you know, like the mutineers from the bounty, he found happiness from, with, a, with another culture, more of a, in a tropical climate, where there was, uh, and the people were more simple and I think more friendly, you know, a pre-industrial uh, culture, and what, what some people would call a tropical paradise, at least those who live in a cold place, uh, like here in Cleveland, Ohio. And when I read this, it, it, it awakened in me my longings for Guam, which was my lost tropical paradise where I had lived for one year before I went back to Manila. Of course, the Philippines has tropical paradise, but not particularly in Manila. The next book is Lyndon Johnson and the American Dream by Doris Kearns. Later, uh, she, this is before she got married, Doris Kearns Goodwin, published in 1976. And this is an outstanding book, wonderful book, about Lyndon Johnson, who was the U.S. president from 1963 to 1969. Of course, he came into office following the assassination of John F. Kennedy when Johnson was vice president. And, uh, you know, uh, John, P Johnson was comparing himself to Franklin D. Roosevelt, whom many people thought, oh, was such a wonderful president. And actually now as a conservative, I don't think so, because he really ushered in big government in the biggest way and cha really changed our country. And, you know, the, the Great Depression, the Great Depression, if, if FDR was so great, why did the Great Depression go on so long? But at, at any rate, uh, since uh, FDR was considered a great man, uh, Johnson was try really competing with him. He wanted to be great as well, so he was trying to do these same things uh, and acting. And actually, he did help with the civil, civil rights movement, helping making sure African Americans could vote. He was a very a big pioneer of that, and really, 
uh, influential in African Americans becoming Democrats, because actually they had been Republicans before, because way back when, you know, the Democratic Party had been the party of the party of the South and of racism. So, and the Republican Party had really been involved in, in ending slavery. So African Americans had been Republican for a long time. Anyway, so Johnson was the one most responsible for African Americans becoming Democrat. And then, so he did these different things, and I think Medicare and and uh, social, well, social security was already in place. But, but, but actually, uh, Johnson's undoing was the Vietnam War, which was such a a horrendous thing, a difficult thing, and uh, this really, uh, you could say, ruined his career because it became so controversial, so difficult, went on for so long, and then Johnson became a very hated man, and uh, and so it was this kind of a tragic story that, uh, you know, that the Vietnam, he was another casualty of the Vietnam War. The next book is No Longer Enemies, Not Yet Friends by Frederick Downs, published in 1991. Now, this is a tremendous book, maybe the best Vietnam War book, because the author had been in, in the Vietnam War, and, uh, and he had the struggles that all Americans had in that, that tough war, and he ended up really hating the Vietnamese during his time at, in war. You know, the North Vietnamese were the enemy, so he hated them as the enemy, and he actually hated the South Vietnamese because... Uh, uh, he felt the South Vietnamese Army wasn't pull, wasn't doing their share. They weren't fighting hard enough in the war. So he had all this bitterness um, for Vietnamese people. And then, and so this book is about when he and a number and a, several other uh, Vietnam veterans came back to Vietnam years later. I believe uh, they were involved in finding the remains of Americans who were lost in action. Who were they believed they could find their you know, their, their remains, their, their bones or their skeleton, maybe they'd been buried somewhere. And so, and what's, what the miracle of this book is that he, he comes to really admire the Vietnamese and when he comes back, because, you know, they'd all been warriors, the Americans and the Vietnamese, and he, can, he, he, he comes to really admire them and make, become friends with them. And he thought, well, these are really a good people. So it has a very happy ending where, uh, and the wounds of the Vietnam War are healed for him. And this mission that he was involved in led to many, many uh, Vietnam veterans coming back to Vietnam to help that country. And, you know, the original mission was to help Vietnam, and it, it turned into a disaster. And so it was, it was very, very satisfying for these fellows to come back and to, to try to make a contribution because, you know, they had tried to, they tried to help and it, earlier, earlier on by preventing a communist takeover, and they failed in that, and so many people had died. So this was a wonderful, this is really maybe the best Vietnam War book, because it showed there was a, there was a happy ending, there was a reconciliation, and there were these Vietnam veterans who were healed when they came back and befriended Vietnamese, and, and really did things to try to help that country. So this is a very fine book. The next book is Antius, or A Memory of Earth, by Thomas Wolfe. Uh, this was published in 1996, posthumously. This was originally a part of the book of Time and the River, and uh, I joined the Thomas Wolfe Society, and and was this this was a perk, uh, something that came with membership, and it's a it's a short uh, short volume taken from that very long book. I love this line uh, from from the book. Quote: We are the sons of our fathers and we shall follow the print of their feet forever. And then he continues, quote, of wandering forever and the earth again. So Thomas Wolfe is a wonderful and amazing author. If you decide to give him a chance, uh, read some of his writing, extremely talented. It's just incredible how he, there was one scene where he, in one of his books, when he was, he was in a library, and there were all these books to read, and uh, you know, he was in there trying to reading and reading and reading. Of course, uh, you can never read all the books, even if you wanted to, if, even if you had the time to. So he's reading. He's in the library furiously reading. And then he thinks to himself, oh, there's all these things going on outside that he's missing. So he rushes outside so he can see what's going on outdoors in, in the city. I think it was in New York City. So he was really ama an amazing fellow. And, and it's just, you're just in awe of this writing. And it, it really grips. It's very gripping. It's not boring. And, and you can't understand it. Uh, but it's just so creative. And, and just and the things that he comes up with is, is so amazing. You think, man, look at this guy. Really something. 
The next book is Spending the Light by Janice M. Reich, published in 1996. And this is a, this uh, book, the author, was the director of the Far West Center, which is a mental health uh, facility here at St. John's West Shore Hospital in Cleveland. It's a self-help psychology book. Uh, my mother purchased this and because uh, I've had depression. And so it's a fine book. You know, it's very nice. And, you know, these self-help books are are nice things to help people who are struggling to move forward with their lives. And uh, so she did a good job. And, of course, her field was uh, uh, mental health and helping people with mental illness, people with depression or bipolar or whatever it may be. So this is a nice contribution to that, to, to helping people uh, become happy and productive. So good job by Janice M. Reich. The next book is Pathfinders by Gail Sheehy, published in 1981. Again, she had written this previous book, pa Passages, I believe, and this book describes the stages of adult development and uh, the ups and downs of life. And I think that the, the thing that I got out of this book was her idea that success can come from failure. And so I thought, well, there's hope for Peter John Ray. If, hope for me. Hope for all of us if, if you've had failure, because failure actually uh, can, uh, can teach humility. You know, we all need humility because, you know, pride is one of the greatest, uh, worst things that we can, ha can happen to us. And, and then if we uh, have humility and we have to work, we can't just be lazy and sit around and do nothing. And uh, even if it's reading books all day, that's something. <laughs> that's, a, that's a contribution. And anyway, so, but then the thing is, if we achieve success, then, then what? Are we going to become arrogant? And if we do, well, then we're going we're gonna to go down because pride leads to a fall, and then we'll have failure again. So this is how we go back and forth between pride and uh, between failure and success, when, between humility and pride. So another fine uh, book about life by Gail Sheehy. The next book is The Man with the Golden Gun by Ian Fleming, published in 1965. Of course, uh, this is another James Bond novel, and they, and they made a movie out of it. And what appealed to me is the references to Jamaica, especially, uh, well, the part of the book is set in Jamaica, and the uh, Rastafarians, because I got interested in the reggae music of Bob Marley, Peter Tosh, and Jimmy Cleffens back in the, when I was in college in the early 80s. And, uh, and actually, since Ian Fleming was British, he tended to go to British places, part, former parts of the British Empire, and Jamaica was a British colony, and that's partly why he goes to Hong Kong, I believe, and of course it's usually in London, that's where they get started, when he gets his assignment, and meets with M, and, and flirts with Miss Moneypenny, so another, and they made a movie about this, and you, you may be familiar with it. The next book is Always a Reckoning by Jimmy Carter, published in 1995. Jimmy Carter was the 39th United States president, elected in 1976, served one term, and uh, this is a book of poetry. He's the only president from the state of Georgia, and he, was, he served in the U.S. Navy, and he also had a peanut farm, so an interesting fellow. And he's, he was extremely active after his presidency in international politics and very involved, and so really a very active life. And and you know, did all the, and and actually, this book, my mother uh, got a signed copy. Jimmy Carter was in 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 Rocky River at Borders Bookstore, I believe. Yeah, Booksellers Bookstore, which is now defunct, and she got his autograph, got this book for me. So that was really something. Jimmy Carter, the U.S. President, back in the late seventies. The next book is Doc Hollywood by Neil Shulman, M.D., published in nineteen seventy nine. Of course, you've probably heard of the movie with Michael J. Fox, and uh, I, I love this story, you know, about this fellow who just wants to, he's, he's uh, finished medical school, and he wants to go to Los Angeles and live in the big city, make big bucks as a plastic surgeon, and, you know, really enjoy the good life in Los Angeles and playing golf and whatever they, you know, the city life. And then on the way, he, his car breaks down in this small town in the south, and of course, uh, and then he, he's stuck there for a while, and he, while he's there, he ends up doing some work as a doctor, and, uh, and then he eventually he, he, and he meets a young lady, and eventually he finds this town kind of appealing, and, and 
And later, you know, he, he goes on to L.A., but then he comes back to this small town because he, that's what he wants to do because it has a nice community and it's a nice small town. And this really appealed to me. I guess my whole life I've been looking for something like that, going back to watching the Andy Griffith show. Yeah, to me, it would be wonderful to live in a small town with friendly people and people know each other and it's a community where people are supportive and friendly and so forth. And that's why I moved to Marion, Ohio in 2008, although it didn't really work out for me. But uh, this is something that has I find very appealing, the living in a small town with friendly people. The next book is At Play in the Fields of the Lord by Peter Matheson, published in 1965. Peter Matheson is a, is a wonderful author, and uh, this is a book about American missionaries who are in South America, and they are in way over their head in the heart of darkness, you could call it. Uh, I think it's a fascinating topic. You know, people, try, when you try to help people, in this case, these missionaries who come from the U.S., and then they go to a third world country uh, promoting their uh, version of Christianity. But, uh, Question is, how strong are they? And very often they're overwhelmed by the situation they find themselves in. And I, I kind of understand that because I was in the Philippines and found and had my challenges, although I wasn't a missionary. <laughs> I was just a regular person, you know, living my life, you know, uh, being married to a Filipina and teaching in a school there. But anyway, this is an interesting, uh, such interesting story because it talks about people trying to help other people. But, you know, it takes a lot of strength if you want to help people and, and can you uh, can you do it? Do you have enough strength? And uh, and are the people you are helping? Do they want help? You know, and are they? So it's and I, you know we have to be when we're helping people. They say the thing to do, the best thing you can do for another person is enjoy being with them. See, we have to we have to learn. I think about how to help people because very often people who are looked down on other people and they think they're better than them. Well, they they think they're helping them, but they're hurting them. When you look down on you, we should respect people. And you know, people have to evolve at their different, different, uh, in different ways. And you have to accept people for where they are and, and, and be patient with them and respect them and, and help, yeah, sure, help them in, what, in whatever way you can. But make sure it's real help and not just you're feeling good by and, and, and thinking you're helping them when you really aren't. The next book is A Story of the Red Cross by Clara Barton, published in 1904. This is an incredible book because and Clara Barton was an, really something. She was the woman who started the Red Cross, just imagine. And it goes back to, uh, it, go, it went back to the uh, problems that were going on in Cuba, Russia, and Armenia with human, with problems with uh, plague and famine, going uh, dealing with these uh, well, in Cuba, I think it was had to do with the uh, Spanish-American War and the uh, the rebellion among Cubans against Spain and uh, Russia and Armenia. Also, you know, these different uh, plagues and famines. And it just shows you what one determined person can do. Because Clara Barton, you know, became aware of that there was tremendous suffering uh, related to war and uh, disease and uh, hunger in these places. So... She was involved in organizing help on a large scale. And so the Red Cross today, they say that the, an institution is the length and shadow of one man or one woman. And this is a perfect example of that. Clara Barton. God bless Clara Barton. The next book is Homefront by Patty Davis, published in 1986. Patty Davis was the daughter of Ronald Reagan, who was governor of California in the 1960s and then elected U.S. president in 1980. Till uh, uh, for two terms in the so almost from uh, reelected in eighty four so he served from eighty one to eighty nine. Now she's writing here about growing up in California, which was very very liberal in the nineteen sixties, and her father was an arch conservative, and then of course she, she was growing up in this in a very liberal environment. So uh, and the anti Vietnam War movement was very strong. So she had a lot of this was it was, was tough. Yeah, she had. She had a real conflict with her father because she was a young person and she was influenced by the culture of young people at the time in California. And it was very challenging being the daughter of uh, Governor Ronald Reagan of California during that time. So she's trying to find her own way, her, her own way in life. A very interesting story. The next book is Candle in the Wind by Alexander Solzhenitsyn, published in 1960. This is a short play delving into the meaning of life and the purpose of science. And uh, 
Yeah, it, the, the title reminds me of the song by Elton John about uh, uh, Lady Diana who had died on that plane or that uh, car crash in Paris, a tunnel in Paris. But this has nothing to do with that. It's more of a you know, candle in the wind, which would be, you know, a candle is uh, sh- sh- something that produces light. And if there's a wind, you know, maybe the candle will go out, talks about the, which would refer, reference to challenges. If there, can you keep the candle burning? And when the, when the wind's blowing in a, in a challenging situation, keep hope alive. And of course, that's what he did all those years that he lived in the Soviet Union and the Gulag Archipelago. The next book is Jesus, the Son of Man by Khalil Gibran, published in 1928. This was a gift to me from a family that had a woman from, who was from Lebanon. Khalil Gibran is the famous Lebanese author. And these are, these are, this is a collection of recollections of people who knew Jesus Christ, apparently uh, not related to the, to the gospel. So it's a very spiritual book and interesting how the people who knew him and other references to Jesus Christ, who was this amazing saint that God sent to help us, to show us, Help us to, to, to know, to find the way. You know, we just had Christmas here, and it's just, we just passed Christmas, and there's this famous scene from uh, It's a Wonderful Life when George Bailey says, he's in the bar, and he's, he's, in, he's in trouble, and he says, he's asking God, show me the way. And that's, that's what people like Jesus Christ do, did and do. They show us the way, how we, how we can live and, and be happy and productive. The next book is The Choice by Og Mandino, published in 1984, and this was a gift from a SRF friend of mine, Dave Dewitt in Jigo, Guam. It's a short book. It's very compelling and spiritual. The author is a self-help magnet, and Og, just imagine, his first name is Og. I think that was a, I think he changed his name, but uh, I believe he's written a number of books. The, the self-help, these self-help books are, are helpful to people. I have a friend, I used to joke around with him that he would go to the bookstore and go to the self-help section. That, uh, And years later, I found myself, even though actually SRF is better than anything, but you know these books are positive in helping people to try to, you know, people are stuck. Very often people are stuck in depression or anger or whatever it is. And, and these self-help books do help people, you know, get out of the mud, so to speak, and keep moving forward and try to, Try to live a good life, make the most of life, and and uh, and be happy and productive and contribute. The next book is "Cry Sorrow, Cry Joy" by Jean Ann Moore, Moore, who is the editor. 1971. This is a collection of African short stories, and I read these to block out the devastating grief I felt after the Cleveland Indians lost the 1997 World Series in Game in, in game 7. So that's kind of funny. But uh, anyway, uh, cry sorrow, cry joy. It's, it's always good to uh, get some to learn from, from other parts of the world and African countries. You don't get to... It's nice to see hear their perspective and what, what they have to say. And that's, that's what... This is a good book to, to get the African perspective. The next book is Better Than Sex by Hunter S. Thompson, published in 1994. This is a book about the 1992 U.S. presidential election, but it's it's pretty disappointing because Hunter Thompson, I think, was had deteriorated. He was had alcoholism and drug addiction, and so there's a lot of joking around. And this is a book he got published because he was famous based on his efforts. The 1972 U.S. presidential election. So, and I, I had trouble understanding when he was joking and when he was serious, but uh, you know. And he's gone now. I think he's kind of a warning, you know, for the, the dangers of fame. He became famous, and it, and things. Well, he must have been troubled from early childhood or from a past life. But uh, I was very disappointed by this book because, uh, you know, I I have a very I'm interested in uh, in U.S. presidential elections and history, and uh, the title would mean that uh, he's trying to say that politics is is more exciting than sex. I think that's what his. That was his idea. Reggie Jackson said that uh, hitting a home run was better than sex in baseball. So anyway, Hunter S. Thompson, who made his contribution to American politics years ago. I believe he's gone now. The next book is Acts of Faith by Eric Segal, published in 1992. 
Again, Seagal is the author of Love Story. And this book, he gets into Judaism and Christianity. I believe those are the faiths he talks about. And the holy cities of Rome and Jerusalem. Now, if you're a Catholic, you know, uh, Rome or Jer Jerusalem would be a holy city. And if you're a Christian of whatever denomination, uh, Jerusalem would be a holy city for you. So I think it's, it's a fascinating topic and going on pilgrimage. They say if you go to a holy place where saints live, then with the right attitude, you can benefit and it can help you spiritually. And that's, that's why people do stuff like this. And that gets into that topic, which I think is a very important one. The next book is God Talks with Arjuna, the Bhagavad Gita, translation and commentary by Paramahansa Yogananda, published in 1996. Yes, this is really something. This is my, in my church. This is a, a book from the, my church's Self-Realization Fellowship. And the, the book is about the Battle of Kurukshetra, which was fought in ancient India uh, between these uh, two uh, different peoples. And um, it also, it's a metaphor for the, uh, the battle between good and evil that we, uh, that we all fight. The most important battle that, that's fought in the world is the fought, the, the, the inner battle that's fought in every human being between good and evil. And maybe we don't even know that we're, that, that we're fighting this battle because oftentimes, you know, we're, we're losing battles and we don't even know it. Maybe we have to wait. Only at certain times, maybe when we're enlightened, we think, oh my gosh, you know, I was wrong about that situation. So, and every time, for example, if we lose our temper, if we're angry, if we, uh, if we hate someone, you know, we're losing the battle. We're losing the battle. Every time we can forgive and be patient and humble and loving and kind, then, then we're winning that battle. So it's very important that, that we win the battle. And with God's help, we can win. We can be good people. We can move forward. We can move tor forward toward uh, union with God for, and be kind and good people and, and helpful and help God in the evolution of this world to a, to a better world where it's peaceful and and we can, war can become a thing of the past, and people can be kind to each other and helpful and enjoy simple living and enjoy this world that God made for us with all the beauties of nature and so forth. The next book is God Alone, The Life and Letters of a Saint by Sri Gayanamada. Uh, this was published by Self-Realization Fellowship in 1984. Uh, Sri Gayanamada was a... Um, was a lady in the United States who joined SRF, and she took on this, this, uh, this was a spiritual name given her by Paramahansa Yogananda, and she's writing about her life. Now, she had been married and had, I believe she had a son, and then she became an SRF nun, and so she's writing about the challenges of life. You know, if we're trying to live a spiritual life, what, what can we do? How can we, how can we succeed spiritually? So this is all about the spiritual path, about meditation, about following the guru, Paramahansa Yogananda, and in his how, how to live teachings and how, how to change for the better and how to, be, how to move forward with our lives and be, be, make a contribution to the world, be, to be positive, to, to have a positive attitude with, with, through yoga meditation and following, following uh, Guruji's uh, teachings. The next book is The Divine Romance by Paramahansa Yogananda, published in 1986. Yeah, this is wonderful. This, this is a book about the spiritual path written by Paramahansa Yogananda, which we, I refer to as Guruji. These, these were written in the 1930s and 1940s, and they're, they're wonderful you know, stories because uh, it's so easy if, if you're trying to live a spiritual life and trying to think of God and meditate and so forth. It's easy to lose our way, you know, be, be very worldly. And, and our, one of the teachings in SRF is the moment our mind is away from God, we're in trouble. So we need to, you know, we do need to do our work and so forth, but we also, we also need to love God. That's the first commandment, thou shalt love the Lord thy God. So it's, this is all about, and the divine romance, what a wonderful topic, which is our romance with God, or whom I like to call divine mother. So this is, this is really wonderful, and it's been the best thing in my life for, for all these years since 1984, uh, yoga meditation and following the teachings of Paramahansa Yogananda. We, we are out of time. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you find a good book, book to read. Uh, and to, to, quote, to quote Scarlett O'Hara from Gone with the Wind, tomorrow is another day. So God bless the Philippines, America, and the whole world. I'll see you next time.